Praise the Lord. It is so good to see you guys this morning. Amen. You may be seated. Excuse me. I always hate that when preachers want to make you stand for three hours while they're talking so you can be seated, all right? Amen. It's good to be here this morning. And I forgot that I'm the announcement maker this morning. My wife, she's still got a couple of frogs in her throat. and We haven't named them yet. Leroy and Ralph, I believe, is what we'll call them. So uh, next time you talk to her, just ask her how Leroy and Ralph are doing. She'll know what you mean. So I'm making the announcements this morning. And what are they, sweetheart? Oh, never mind. I'll, uh, I will come up with something. Well, be, uh, there's not a lot going on. No service tonight. The last Sunday of the month, we canceled service. And uh, uh, regular, we're, we are really going to try to get back into the swing of things this week. Our, all of our regular services, uh, due to sickness and different things, we've, we've had to do a lot of canceling lately. And uh, there's a... There's a variety of sicknesses, so you get to pick which one you want. You can have the flu, you can have a, a head cold, you can have the sinus infection, you can have a, a COVID, a variety of COVID. So, uh, man, there's a bunch of things out there if you want one. Anybody want one? Anybody had one sick and tired of being sick and tired? Amen. I tell you what, I will be glad when this stuff is over and we get back to normal. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I wanted to say hi to everybody this morning, hi to everybody on the internet this morning. We are glad to have you. And I want to thank everybody for filling in for us last week. We, uh, uh, we were both a little under the weather, so th I worked out great for Brother and Sister McGee to be here. And, and for you, all of you that filled in for us at the different times, we really appreciate that. Amen. So let me make a couple of announcements. Like I say, no service tonight. And here's an announcement somebody wanted me to make. The uh, Pregnancy Help Center, uh, I think it's out of Camdenton, uh, is branching out into our area and if you would want to be inter if interested in being involved in that uh, they're going to have a service uh, February the 10th 6:30, over at First Baptist Church and kind of get it rolling in this area it's a good thing and so if you'd like to be involved in that you can see me later for more information on that amen and um, I think that's all the announcements uh, we got this week we're back in the saddle and ready to go and so good to see you. One, here's one. Having to get a bulletin because on the insert, inside the bulletin has things that's coming up in the, past, in the next few weeks. Make sure you get a bulletin because there are some things coming up that uh, we want to make sure you're involved in all of that. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Brother Lonnie, do you feel like making your way up here? Lead us in prayer. And uh, there's uh, several needs that will be on the wall behind me, but there's two or three that I want you to really... Uh, pay attention to. Brother Bud Scott had surgery Friday and he's home and uh, it, it's difficult. When you when you have back surgery it's just not easy so he's got a recovery time so please be in prayer for Bud and Janice. Amen. Brother Raymond Tomlinson is not doing well. He uh, he needs our prayers during this, this difficult time. And Brother Chuck Pryor he's got some problems with his hands they can't quite figure it out. We're going to have to have some extensive tests to find out what that is so Remember him in prayer. And then uh, there's, a, there's a lot of others. And uh, so just remember your brothers and sisters in the Lord as uh, you go to prayer this week and just believe God for a, a move on their life. Pray, pray for a revival. Amen. Brother Lonnie. Pastor, we didn't do birthdays either. We'll do, brother, we'll do birthdays after Brother Lonnie. Uh, Shall we pray this morning? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that you are a God that loves us, that you are a God that takes care of us and meets every need that we have. Father, we're so grateful and we're so profound in our belief, God, that you are the answer to each and every problem that we have. Father, I bring all those that are sick, all of those that have had surgery, all of those that are needing a, to be lifted up. God, we just speak healing unto those bodies this morning. Lord, we ask you, God, that you'd meet each and every need in those lives, whether it's COVID, whether it's cancer, whether it's whatever the, the need is, God, we know that you can lift them up and you can touch them and you can heal them. Father, this morning I pray for our church. Lord, that you, God, will bless this church, bless the leadership in this church, meet every need that they may have. And God, we pray for our school system. God, that you will bless the children. God, that you will meet the, uh, bless the teachers that teach them. And God, we ask you to bless America. Turn us around and bring us back to the cross. 
And Lord, we ask you, God, this morning, Lord, to be with us as we, uh, Pastor, brings a message this morning, God, and we just give you the praise and glory for it in your holy name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. One thing, Brother Lonnie, is pretty, thank God for our school and our teachers. I, we are blessed. We are blessed in this area to have the good school district that we have, and, and we don't have to deal with a lot of things that they're dealing with across the nation, the uh, CRT and, and all of those different things. Uh, pretty well got it, we put a lid on it. A bunch of people rose up, went to school board meetings for whatever really had a chance to get started, and put a lid on it. And uh, thank God for that, that, uh, that we're under control here as we speak, and we hope that it prays it continues to, to do that. Amen. Jennifer was going to sing, but we broke a grit string on our guitar. Amen. So we'll do birthdays. We all get to sing on that. Amen. And uh, does any, are, were there any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Stan, did you have a birthday? 106? I thought it was somewhere around there. <laughs> uh, Trenton, you want to be the birthday man this morning? All right. And you'll have to run one back to stand, too. So, amen. A oh, happy birthday to you. A oh, happy birthday. Sister Sharon, she's 16 this year, and uh, I'm 18, every bit of it, every bit of it, amen, praise God. I was talking to my son Joe this morning on the phone, and uh, uh, he he was excited about a picture somebody sent out of an old time picture, I'll leave it at that, and he, man, he's going on and on and on, and I said, Joe, I hate to interrupt, but I got to go to work here in about five minutes, and I'm late already. So I only work one day a week. So you really need to be there on time when you get, when you do that. Praise God! All right, Sister Jennifer's not going to sing. I'm looking forward to that. But uh, we have a guest with us this morning, and uh, I guess guest. We hope that they come here more often. But uh, Brother Terry Green, Terry, make your way on up here if you would. And uh, we, we, I, I, I met him for the first time this morning, but yet our families go back decades. From Climax Springs, Missouri. Anybody ever heard of Climax Springs? It's a suburb of Cross Timbers. <laughs> Praise God. And I was from Cross Timbers, and, and my mom's family is all from uh, Climax Springs, and uh, they, they grew up together. So the Greens and the Kurt Wrights and all that go back generations, and uh, my sister went to his dad's church and knew them all. So I asked him if he'd sing for us this morning. So give him a good hand this morning. Let me say it's a delight to be here. Uh, my wife and I was here last week and was so blessed to hear uh, Brother uh, Bishop uh, McGee and our hearts was blessed. We travel all over. They pastored for 30 years and then I've been evangelist the last 12 years. But I grew up in the ministry. I'm a PK. And uh, so uh, such a wonderful, warm welcome that this church has given us. and all the ushers and the greeters at the door. So you have, you have a rarity here, and you need to appreciate every bit of it. Hallelujah. Looking forward to hearing uh, Brother Owsley preach this morning. So this song kind of goes with the times that we're in, uh, what we've been going through, and um, it applies to my life as well. I'm not here to talk. I'm here to sing. So anyway, I trust that the song will bless your heart. <clears throat> I know you've been in this valley for so long. And the mountain that you're facing now 
seem steeper as time goes on. But just ahead, a little farther down the road. <laughs> it's the first time that's ever happened. Let's try it again. I tell you what, that's why I like live music. Uh, <laughs> I play the guitar and the bass, and I love good, you have good music here, but we'll try this again, and if it doesn't work, I'll grab a guitar and do something. You love the Lord. Yeah. Let's try it again. Hallelujah. One thing about it, you can start it over. Hallelujah. I know it seems you've been in this valley for so long. And the mountain that you're facing now seems steeper as time goes on but just ahead a little farther down the road it ain't gonna do it something's wrong either with a CD or it's not reading my track so but anyway hallelujah Ah, uh, let's let like, can I borrow the guitar or somebody's guitar? Mm -hmm. Here, you must borrow your guitar. Your guitar. Sure. Okay. <laughs> 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 and you probably won't be singing with you next. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. My granddaddy was a brush over uh, uh, preacher. A lot of brush arbors over at Climax Springs and all that. Never knew what he was going to do. He's a French Indian, and he could be just preaching along. He'd grab his little get Gibson, and I, if I can get all the words here, and this is a little song that, that he used to sing. It's an old song. I like old songs, but any, and he'd sing this. Once in the stillness of the late midnight hour, I felt the presence of the Lord's saving power. I fell on my knees and I cried to him there. Merciful Savior, hear lost sinner's prayer. Oh, every hour of every day, every moment in every way, I'm leaning on Jesus, he's a rock of my soul. I'm singing his praises wherever I go. I'll never forget that night on my knees, that wonderful moment has never left me. It was life's greatest promise, and I know that it's true. I'm going to heaven, brother, how about you? Oh, every hour of every day, yes, every in every way why oh, I'm leaning on Jesus he's a rock of my soul 
I'm singing his praises wherever I go. Sing that chorus one more time. Yes, every hour, oh, of every day. Yes, every Oh, I'm leaning on Jesus. He's the rock of my soul. I'm singing his praises wherever I go. I'm singing his praises wherever I go. Praise God. He's, he's from a singing family, and uh, we were just about to have, the, the group was called Second Generation, and I was just about ready to give them a call and have them come and put on a concert for us, and then this little thing called COVID happened, and we've had very little since then, but we're about ready to gear up and go again. Amen. Would you make welcome my, my twin, Jeremy Adams. <laughs> I know I've been looking at him that's <laughs> there is a slight resemblance and uh if you look at that resemblance you look here and then you look right over there there's there's another resemblance just sitting right over there anyway good to see you guys this morning you know what i i have a feeling that there is something special that's going to happen today I've got some Chiefs fans over here that are saying, yeah, 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 he's going to talk about the game, right? Maybe I will talk about the game, but God has something in store for you. Okay, the game's going to happen. It's going to be there. You'll get to watch it, I promise, hopefully, maybe. And if not, so be it. But God has something in store for you today, right? Did you come prepared? Did you come ready? Did you come wanting to receive something from him tonight or today, this morning? Well, guess what? Be ready, be accepting, be willing. Okay, God wants to share something with you, wants to, to give you wisdom, wants to give you something, wants to bless you. You just have to be willing and ready. But there is this sea of red that's going on over here, and then I guess my, my, my youngest, my, the image of me, has a, sea, uh, has a white shirt on. I don't know. He's, he's rooting for somebody else. I don't understand him. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm getting an amen from Raymond over here. Anyway, so at least we have fans of all varieties in here, right? Just no Bengals fans. All right. God is great, right? We, we uh, in Sunday school this morning, we, we were talking about some, some different things and, uh, discussing where we can draw strength from. Um, how many know where you draw strength from? Sometimes we, we draw strength from problems in our lives. Through, through things that we go through that we don't want to be there. We want to get out of this. But sometimes God allows us to go through it for a little bit. For us to become stronger, to strengthen us, so that we can build up and we can face that next battle. We can make it through that next valley to get to that next hilltop, to share with somebody that is dealing with something that we may have dealt with. The problems that you deal with are not your own, and when you go, with, go through them, you are not alone. God is always there with you. He is our ever-present comforter, strengthener, helper, one to lift us up. Sometimes he's there to, I'm trying to think how I should say it more uh, reverently, slap us in the back of the head. He's there. Sometimes he lets us know that way, but it's to build us up, okay, to strengthen us that we can take that to somebody else. It's good to see you guys this morning. Amen. Thank you for viewing us online, being out there in internet land. Appreciate you guys doing that. Uh, we get 
people from coast to coast watching. Well, we have nations, other nations watching maybe. If, if you're out there from somewhere else and you want to say something, just type a little message in there. Show us where you're from. If you're from Gravois and you can do that too, fine, whatever. Okay, It's good to see that going on that we can, we can share our message uh, out there, share God's message out there to those. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer here in just a second and collect our offering. Our tithes and our offerings time. we got our baskets here on the front. we got one in the middle. You can mail it in via the Venmo app if you want to do it electronically and do it that way. We appreciate you for doing that. God is here for you this morning, and it's good to see you guys here, see the green chairs filled up with all these different colors, even if it is white, when it should be more red. But God is here for you today. God is here for you this morning. So get ready to give of our tithes and our offerings. Get ready to give of our worship to him. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you, and we thank you for this day. We thank you for each and every one that is here this morning. God, we just want to praise you, Lord, and glorify your name, and thank you, Lord, for the freedoms that we have in this great country of ours, Lord. Lord, that you can just lift our country up, Lord, and give it strength, Lord. Lord, we just pray for this, the tithes and our offerings, Lord, that will go to fulfill your needs, Lord. Lord, that our worship will just uh, bring glory to your ears, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. I'll stand if you would, please. We want our coffee in the lobby. We watch our worship on the screen. We got a rock.
Glory to God. You may be seated. We do have a great God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I tell you what, I'm enjoying being in church this morning. Amen. Amen. We missed it last week, and it is so good to be here. Amen. Brother Fred. I want you to sing this with me. You'll know it. Mm -hmm. Well, let him be low in this old sinful world. Amen. 
So where could you go but to the Lord? Glory to God. I have Man, I'm, I'm like a fish out of water this morning. It feels good to be back in the house of God. Amen. Junior church is dismissed this morning, and they can follow the leaders right through that door to my left. Praise God. As they are departing, you may turn, if you would like, in your Bibles, the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 19. Amen. Praise God. God is so good. God is so good. You know, you, you don't realize how much you miss church till you, you, you're away and then you come back. We were only gone one Sunday, I mean, a couple of, a couple of midweek services, but, but I tell you, it feels good to be in the house of God this morning, Brother Lonnie. It really does. Amen. If your Bible's this morning on the wall behind me, I'm sure, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 19, I, I like this. It says, what? I had a fellow that used to work with me. And uh, you look at him and he would say, what? You, you, you ever meet that guy? Yeah, yeah. What? What, what did I do wrong or what do you want, you know? And that, and that was him. His name was Greg. And uh, so I, I don't know if he got that from the Bible or the Bible got that from him. I, I probably, he, he probably didn't get it from the Bible. He, that was just him. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. I want you to remember that. For ye have been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Father God, this morning we're so grateful, Lord, for your blessing. Thank you for the great opportunity to be in your house to worship you and to magnify your glorious name. We hunger, we thirst this morning, God, for a dynamic outpouring of your Holy Spirit. God, that every person in this building or over the internet, God, may be touched by your presence. God, that we'll never be the same, but we'll be challenged to draw near to you, challenged to step up and to step forward, to be and to do what you've called us to be. Lord God, we're nothing without you. But God, this morning we're believing for great and mighty things, for lives to be changed, saved if they're lost, filled if they're saved, move forward if they're called. And God, we'll praise you and give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Last Saturday, I wasn't feeling well. I knew I had to preach the next morning. I pray and thinking all week long what to preach on. And uh, finally, Saturday morning, God woke me up with the title to the sermon. Now, a lot of preachers get sermons and then get titles. I'm, I'm just the opposite. I get titles and then I build a sermon around it. And as God gave me this title, I'm thinking, God, that's, that's not a title. The title was this, What Does the Redeemed Man do. I said, God, that's, that's not a title. What, what does the redeemed man do? Well, I'll tell you this, he don't, doesn't do what he used to. <laughs> doesn't live the way he used to. Doesn't go to the place he used to. He's different. And so as I sat down on my computer and I began to type, God began to reveal to me what the redeemed man does. First of all, what does the word redeem mean? And uh, you look through the Bible and, and you're constantly hearing the word redeemed. I listened to several preachers this week and they, they somehow will always throw the word in redeemed. I am redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine. All to him. Glory to God. Woo! I am redeemed. Are you glad this morning you're redeemed? Well, what does that word redeem mean? It means to ransom, to free or to rescue by paying a price. And that's what God said. He said, you're not your own, but you've been bought with a price. My first recollection of uh, redeemed was in the 60s. And... Uh, a lot of you are going to understand this, some of you won't. 
back before Walmart and all the discount stores, there weren't discounts, and, and we were poor anyway. We needed discounts. So we'd go to the grocery store, Gerbs, and we'd buy groceries, and they would check you out, and they'd give you some stamps. And those were S and H green stamps. Can they have an amen? Oh, glory to God! Woo! It don't get no better. And you get a little book on what you could purchase or redeem mm. with these green stamps. And we'd save up till we got several books, and then we'd make that long trip, long trip from Windsor to Sedalia. Out on the east end of town, there was a S and H Green Stamps Redemption Store. Mm. I'm feeling it, aren't you? And you'd already have picked out what you want. And there's this toaster. Yeah, you'd just run over across the street to Walmart and buy you a toaster. You had to save and save and save. And this toaster. Now, as you see that toaster set on that shelf, it sat there day after day after day. When the store would close at night, they would walk out and they'd shut that door. And that toaster was locked up in that store. And then somebody would walk through that door with a handful of green stamp books. And they'd say, I'm here to redeem that toaster. And that toaster would no longer be bound to that store. But that toaster would go home with a new owner, glory to God, because it had been redeemed and no longer is it locked up at night, but it's free now to go set in somebody's kitchen, amen. Glory, it don't get much more spiritual than that, folks. Man, I'm feeling it. Mm. And that's where I learned about what the word redemption meant. As I'm, God's amazing. As I'm preparing this sermon, I get a phone call. And it's from an animal rescue store. And it said, do you know so-and-so? And I said, yes. He said, he, there's a cat here that this person wants. And do you think it'd be a good parent, this cat? And I said, it'd be the best parent. <laughs> that cat's ever had. And that boy walked into that store and he did, what did he do? He redeemed that cat, hallelujah. No longer did that cat belong, but the cat had been set free because somebody redeemed him. And you were locked up in a store one time. You were locked up and no way to get out. And sin bogged your life down. And somebody came along and redeemed you. And you were loose. And you were set free. And you've been bought with a price. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo, why don't somebody shout this morning? Amen. Praise God. I didn't know I was going to get this excited about this title. Amen. But it means something. Amen. To be redeemed. And when, and when, I, when we speak of being redeemed and what it means, amen, that it, it says we're not our own anymore. We have been bought. We have been purchased with a price. And, and if you're here this morning and you're saved, you are redeemed. You've been purchased with the blood of Calvary's Lamb. You've been purchased with the most valuable ticket that could ever be bought because Christ died for you and to set you free, amen. So then we begin to think that if I am redeemed, well, what's the next thing that I should do? Amen? If I'm redeemed, if I've been taken and brought out of an old lifestyle, brought to a new lifestyle, what are my first steps? What should I do? And I begin to think about this, and I, I use this man as an example the, two weeks ago when I preached, but it, it really fits because he's the first and basic example in the book of John of redemption. And we'll read the story of the man named Nicodemus. And you've heard me preach very long, so you should know a lot about Nicodemus. Amen. I, I was raised on that. Praise God. And that little, that little hillbilly Baptist church, except a man be born again. And then those old preachers wouldn't say it in a nice way. They say, you're going to split hell wide open. 
Don't you think you're going to go to heaven any other way other than through the blood of Jesus Christ? The only way. Hallelujah. And I thought about Nicodemus. He was a redeemed man. Amen. And, but what was he redeemed from? Because it, on the outward appearance, Nicodemus needed no redemption. If you would ask anybody about Nicodemus, uh, they would have probably explained to you what a very holy and religious and devout man he was. They would have spoke with great admiration of Nicodemus and, uh, and uh, uh, how, how impeccable his life was and how that from a small boy he had been raised in church in the synagogue and he brought up and he never missed a church service, never missed a Sunday school. And, and uh, uh, they would have told you how uh, devout he was in his calling uh, and his service to God. And so on the outside, uh, Nicodemus needed no redemption. But on the inside, there's a different story. Because as we look at Nicodemus, Nicodemus knew something about himself uh, that nobody else knew. Nicodemus knew that on the outside, he was impeccable as far as his standard uh, to God was, but he knew that on the inside, uh, there was something missing. So there was a void. Uh, you know, there's just something that didn't feel right to him. And so Nicodemus came to Jesus, and, and uh, he, he met Jesus that night. And I, I've told you a story so many times, you, you can help me tell it. And as he walks up to Jesus, recognizing and honoring Jesus, who he was, that you are a teacher come from God, because no man can do the miracles that, that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus looked into the heart of Nicodemus, just as he looked into your heart that morning, that night, whenever it was, all of a sudden you begin to realize that, that your heart was empty. You needed a savior. He spoke to the heart of Nicodemus and told him about the born again experience. Now it doesn't go into great detail about Nicodemus that night. But I believe with all of my heart that night Nicodemus met Jesus. And he met him in such a way that it literally changed his life. And he was redeemed. He was brought out of the old lifestyle that he had to a brand new lifestyle. Now, what did Nicodemus do the next day? We don't know. What did he do the next weeks, the next months, the next few years that lay ahead? We don't know. But by the end of the story of Nicodemus, we get some kind of an idea that he made a, developed a relationship with Jesus. It may have been one that was kind of in the shadows because of his social standard. It may have been, I don't know. He may have been to let things out as he talked to people and, and told them about, you know, the other night, I, I went out in, into the woods there and there's this preacher. And when he spoke, it touched my heart. And when he spoke to my soul, it, it changed me. You know what? I'll never be the same again. We, we simply don't know. But we do know this. But that encounter that night was real. That encounter that night made a difference in Nicodemus' life. I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that night he was redeemed. I believe he was bought that night out of a world of religiosity unto a world of salvation. Because we see as the time goes on, we don't see anything about Nicodemus anymore until we get to the time when Jesus was hanging on the cross. When everybody at that time who knew Jesus was standing back for fear of their own lives. Even those who walked with him daily were scared. But Nicodemus wasn't. Because Nicodemus and another man by the name of Joseph, of Arimathea, they stepped out of the shadows that night and they walked boldly up to the foot of that cross. They said, we want the body to take him and give him a beer. If he wasn't redeemed, he wouldn't have taken the chance. That could have cost him his own life. But he was redeemed and he was changed and he was brought to that place where they took the body of Jesus and they gave him a decent burial, an honorable burial. Amen. And that was a rich man. 
A man that looked like he needed no redeeming, but yet he was redeemed. You see, it doesn't really matter what we look like on the outside. It's the inner side man that needs redemption. Amen. And so he followed Jesus. So what does a redeemed man do? He, first of all, he comes to Jesus, and then he follows him, and, and he doesn't forget who Jesus is and what Jesus has done in his life, and not ashamed. Not ashamed of Jesus. And then I began to think about, well, who's next that can be redeemed? The title says, what does a, the redeemed man do? Well, the next person we see is so totally opposite of Nicodemus. You read in John chapter 4 about a woman. You see, women, when I use the word man, I could use the word mankind. Male, female. And we see a woman. There was nothing like Nicodemus. She was not a Jew. She was a Samaritan. She, she didn't have a chance at knowing God. Her possibility of ever... Her possibility of ever being changed was none. You, you see, that's what I like about Jesus. He'll change you, and he don't care who you are. He'll do something for you, and it doesn't matter what social standard you stand upon. He's there because he cares about you. And so as Jesus, I'm not going to go in detail on the story. We know the story of the woman at the well. And Jesus needed to go through Samaria, and he sat on the rock there by the well. And this woman comes out, nothing at all like the religious man of Nicodemus. But she was a woman of a bad reputation. I, I, don't, I don't know what her, her real reason for being in the condition she's in. I heard a preacher the other day, and he made this statement. He, of course, he was wrong. He said, this woman had been divorced five times. Where did it say that? She may have had five husbands that died. I don't know. But it did say she had had five husbands. And the man she was living with now was not even her husband. So it brings us to that place that this woman, because of the choices she had made in life, it brought her to a standard of life that people looked down upon. People wanted nothing to do with her. She was a sinner in every, every sense of the word. She was the outcast of society. She was the talk of the town. She was the woman that nobody even wanted to associate with. That's why she came at that particular time of the day to draw the water when nobody else was there. And so we have this woman so totally opposite of what Nicodemus was. But when Nicodemus came to her, after a bit of conversation, and they talked back and forth about whose religion was right, the Samaritans or the Jews, and where they should worship. And, and I like these words. Love these words. Jesus said, the hour comes and now is that true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And he is searching for those who will worship him. He's searching for anybody that will worship him. He's not looking for any particular type of people, any group of people, but he's looking for somebody that wants to worship him. Anybody wants to worship him. As they begin their conversation, they continued on in verse 25. The woman said to him, I, I, after he had spoken to her heart, he said, the woman said, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he has come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said unto her, I that speak to you am he. I am the Messiah. I am the redemption. Glory to God, I am. I am. I am. Doesn't that, sound, doesn't that ring a bell? The I am has showed up one more time, amen. Uh, praise God, not just with Moses, uh, but he showed up in this woman's life. I am the one that's gonna change you. The disciples came back from the city and they noticed the woman there. Why in the world is he talking to her? But I, I read something there and, and, and it says this, and she left her 
water pots. I, I like that. When, when a person is redeemed, they leave behind the old life. When Elisha met Elijah, he went back up and cut up the meat market, cut up his oxen, had a barbecue. In other words, he was cutting ties with the old life. No more the possibility of going back to where I have come from. I'm through with that. And this woman left her water pots. She ran into the city and began to address the men. And she says, come. Now, maybe you need to know who this woman was. She was probably the woman that hadn't spoken to anybody publicly like that with any authority for quite some time. Doesn't say that, but just by, by her lifestyle and, and who she was, what right would she have to come and speak to the men? But she said, come and see a man that told me everything I've ever done is not this the Christ. Give him a hand of praise, amen. Give him a hand of praise. Is not this the Christ? Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. She was this, but now she's that. She used to be, but she's not any longer. She was lost, but now she's found. She was changed in the instant of time because she met the man from Calvary. She met the Jesus, amen, that can change lives. Woo! Glory to God. She was redeemed, changed, loosed, set free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So she, she went from being a person of no, nothing to the greatest evangelist at that time. I, I, I used to preach it like this. The disciples went into town to get a bag of burgers to come back to see Jesus. She ran into town, brought the town back out with her to hear Jesus. Woo, glory to God. Glory to God. You see, she'd been changed. She'd been redeemed. Amen. I read in John chapter 9 about a man that was blind from birth. Jesus came to him, and one of the most unusual methods of healing blind eyes Probably none of us would really be in favor of it that way, but would accept it. And he came to Jesus, and in a, in a simple way, Jesus reached down, grabbed a handful of dirt. I won't do it, okay? <laughs> I, I was going to make some sound effects there, but I've, maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> Having a cold, it might not be. Never mind. <laughs> and we all thank him now. Reached down and grabs a handful of dirt and spits into it. Come here, my boy. Now, can you see? He didn't ask him, but can you see? No, I can't see. You just smeared mud in my eyes. Go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And he goes and he washed. His eyes were opened. Totally, completely could see and changed. He goes back and the people begin to question him about what happened. And the Pharisees, they, they loved to try to find any way they could to uh, trick him. They said, tell us, tell us what happened and who is this guy and Tell us something about it in verse 25. He says, I don't have the answer to all of the questions you want to ask me. All I know is 
I once was blind, but now I see. I, I, I once couldn't see the light of day, Woo! but now I need sunglasses because it's blinding me. I, I, I don't know what happened to you. I, I don't know. I just got saved last night. Well, can you tell me something? I can't tell you a thing about the Bible. I, I can't quote to you one scripture. I can't explain to you from Genesis to Revolution, Revelation. I, I don't know any of that stuff. Well, you're claiming to be a Christian. What do you know? He says, well, I know that I was lost. I was bound in sin. I had a burden on my heart that troubled me every day. And I met this man, and all of a sudden, in an instant of time, I was changed. I'm not bound anymore. I'm loose. I'm set free. I'm born again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what I know. Hallelujah. That's what I know. The redeemed man is not ashamed. He's ready to tell somebody. And then in verse 33, it says this. He, he explains to him, he says, if this man were not of God, he could do nothing. He could do nothing. But he stood on his testimony. I know, like Paul said, in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed in him against that day. Amen, I know. I, I may not be able to quote scripture to you. You've only been saved a couple days. I, I may not be able to tell you how the church operates. I've only been saved a short period of time. But I can tell you there was a man that touched my life. And I'll never be the same again. He changed me. If you all weren't here and I was able, I'd run around this church. Glory to God. Glory to God. And there was a demon man, demon possessed man that got redeemed. Mark chapter 5, verse 2. After a stormy night on the sea, and Jesus lands and he steps out on the shore. And when he did, you see, when God calls you, he can find you and bring you to Christ. And this man was one that was demon-possessed that would run through the tombs at night screaming, brought fear into the lives of everybody. He was so demon-possessed that society had tried to bind him and lock him up and they couldn't do it. And there was a lot of fear for this man. There was no hope for this man. Society, the psychiatrist, the law enforcement, so to speak, the doctors had, had done everything they could to bind him and to change him, but they couldn't do it. And when Jesus stepped off on the shore, it says, and when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him a man out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Verse 6 says, but when he saw Jesus far off, he ran and he worshipped him. Now, and this man already got saved. I don't know, he probably had somehow. Between over here in the tombs, cussing up a storm, raising all kinds of devil stuff, and he sees a man, whoo, walk off a ship. Now, I could be wrong, but somehow I just believe from that tomb to the time he got to Jesus, he fell at his feet, glory to God, and somewhere in that short distance, he was changed, he was saved because he worshiped God, he worshiped him, he surrendered to him. Whoa, glory to God. You mean it doesn't take so many days of this class or that class or so many years in school or, or any? No, it takes just meeting Jesus. And he was saved. And, 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 he, and he bows down there. And verse 7, he says, And when he cried with a loud voice, he said, What have I to do with thee, thou Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? He knew who he was. There's people that have sat in churches for years and still 
don't know who Jesus is. Isn't he that guy we go talk about on Sunday morning? My family been doing that for years. Yeah, we're faithful. We're there every Sunday morning. Amen. My great-granddaddy was a charter member of the church. And I know about Jesus. But I don't know Jesus. But from the tombs to the feet of Jesus, he was redeemed. And he began to worship him. So what does that redeemed man do? Well, verse 18 tells us that he got up and he wanted to go with Jesus. Lord, let me go with you. I, I, I want to be with you. I want to go where you go. I want to do what you do. I don't want to leave you. you. You made such a difference in my life. I don't ever want to leave you. And, and Jesus said, well, that, that's honorable. But he said, i got a greater calling for you. I want you to go home. And I want you to tell your family and your friends what I did for you. Amen. I, I want you to go back. Amen. And after he had told everybody and his family and all of his friends, he set out on a great evangelistic crusade. In verse 20 it says, And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And listen to this. And all men did marvel. Praise God. Been saved, what? A week? Went to Decapolis. Jumped up on that big rock they had out in the town square. Come here and let me tell you what Jesus did for me. Praise God. Let me tell you what Jesus did for me. And he began to tell everybody about what Christ had done. And he's like, that's what redeemed people do. They, they tell people about Jesus. And we'll finish up with this one about an antichrist that gets redeemed. An antichrist. Yeah. If you read in Acts chapter 9, there's a story of an antichrist. A man that at that time was probably the most committed and dedicated person in the land to stop and stamp out Christianity. Wasn't just satisfied with doing it in one region, but he traveled like an evangelist. He got the papers of authority to go into the city of Damascus to arrest, beat, kill if necessary, anybody that would proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. Is not not an antichrist? That, that would be an antichrist. And as he was nearing the city of Damascus, all of a sudden a light shone around him from heaven. And he fell to the ground. And when he fell to the ground, he said, Lord, who is it? He said, Saul, I'm Jesus whom you persecute. I, I believe at that moment. You see, there's something about when Jesus speaks to your heart. Anybody remember E.F. Hutton? Oh, yeah. When E.F. Hutton spoke... Everybody listened. I, I love the words about the, the uh, high priest guards. They were sent out to arrest Jesus. And they stood there at the back of the crowd as Jesus spoke. And at, at the end of that, they were supposed to go up to him and arrest him and take him back to the high priest. That they might begin the procedure to get him crucified. And they stood there and they listened to Jesus speak. And he quit speaking. And these two guards, they... walk back to the high priest. Where is he? Oh. Never. Never. Never has there been a man speak like that man spoke. His words were so powerful that it touched their hearts. It stopped 
them dead in their tracks. And it sent them back to the high priest with a message. And there's never been anybody speak like this man. I don't know if they were redeemed or not. They very possibly could have been. But it changed their, their, their journey. It changed their life. And as Paul, Saul, surrendered his life to Jesus on that Damascus road, he got up from being Saul of Tarsus to become Paul, the, in my humble opinion, the greatest apostle, possibly the greatest preacher outside of Jesus Christ that ever lived. Because he was changed. He was changed. He was redeemed. What did that redeemed man do? That redeemed man went and began to tell everybody what Christ had done for him. Totally giving up a life that was a life of luxury to a life of not knowing where he would sleep next. Musicians and singers want to come. So what, as I ask the question, does a redeemed man do? Well, first they come to Jesus. They yield their lives. They surrender to Jesus. They develop an attitude of not my will, but thine be done. They confess Jesus. And they follow him. They're not ashamed of Jesus. They sell out to Jesus and become one with him. They proclaim him. They witness. They preach. They change their lifestyle. They change some of the people they hang around with. That's where a lot of people fall into problems anymore. They come to church, get under conviction, get saved, get up and go back out and live in the same cesspool they did before they came to Christ. And the contamination in a few days will begin to overtake them again. Don't go back there. They strive to be as much like Jesus as they can. They quit sinning. Strive to live as righteously as they can. And they fellowship with other redeemed people. We call it the church. And they forsake not the assembling of themselves together. They become one with a whole new group of people. The church. The redeemed. There's so many songs about redeemed. I'm wanting to sing one, but I'm not going to because it's probably not the one that Darlene's getting ready to lead us in. But aren't you glad you're redeemed this morning? Yes. Aren't you glad that you're redeemed? What does a redeemed man do? Begin to live a new life. Become a new person. Everything about them changes. They, they become new. So what do you do? What do I do as a redeemed man or a redeemed woman? Let me fill you in on this, that time is short. I begin to see this in my mind. Then when Jesus comes, it's not going to be like this, but just kind of for, for thought's sake. When Jesus comes and he looks at the crowd of humanity, will he be able to pick me out of that crowd as a redeemed person? Will he be able to pick you out of that crowd as a redeemed person? You see, if he looks down and sees a blood-stained robe, the blood of God's only Son, that person's been washed or cleansed by that blood. I, I, I believe, this, this is just fictitious, but let me, if you will, I believe when that time takes place, every blood-washed robe woo, will rise to be with him, washed in the blood of Calvary's lamb, loosed, set free, changed, redeemed. So as a child of God, the people know I'm redeemed. The people know that I 
used to be this, but I'm not any longer. I've been bought with a price. Scripture says I'm not my own. I'm kind of glad of that. Back when I owned myself, I was a mess. But when I sold out and let Jesus become owner, life's been good. Life's been good. Amen. If you're here this morning, you don't know him. I would not leave this building till I'd come to this altar, surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. If he's drawing you, man, that's the first step. That's the invitation. You come. Let Christ do a work in your life. He'll save you, change you. You can be redeemed, loosed, and set free. So if you're not absolutely 100% sure, why don't you come this morning? If you just want to come and stand this altar and pray and give praise to God, you feel free to come as well. As Darlene sings this song, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I've been brought. this morning. You come right now. this morning you don't have to leave here sitting on the shelf waiting for somebody to lock the door of your life but you can come to Jesus today and be changed amen As we bow in prayer this morning I don't want anybody to miss this opportunity I, I don't know everybody's spiritual condition maybe 100% saved this morning it's wonderful but if not, 
don't let this pass by. So as we pray and you need Christ, you come this morning. Father, I, I just praise you. And I give you honor and glory for the great gift of salvation that you've extended to every man that whosoever will will come and drink of the waters of life freely. Anybody can walk away from an old life and walk into a new one with Jesus Christ. Thank you for this wonderful congregation. I pray God for your Holy Spirit to reach out your hand of love, touch the heart of every individual. And Father, if there's one that's not saved, I pray they won't leave here today, but they'll come to you. But Father, soon and very soon, would you get a hold of them? Touch their life. Glory, glory. As we sing this chorus one more time. If you're here, you come.
Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you know that man? Amen. Praise God. Amen. It's been good to be in church. We had a good time last week at home, but not this good. Amen. Praise God. I'm glad to be back in the house of God. Amen. Amen. No service tonight, but regular service this week. Come out and be with us if you possibly can. Help us out, and uh, we'll do a great job. But Terry Green, I'm going to ask if you would dismiss in prayer this morning.